<laughs> Greetings, survivors and friends, Shadow Franks here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Have a Look at the Roadmap for Rust and see if anything's changed, because we haven't done one of these for a while, and it's good to keep your finger firmly on the proverbial pulse. For those of you who don't know, Rust does actually have a roadmap, and although the way it's been presented has changed over time, we can still get a glimpse of what sort of things are being planned. Not all of them, of course, but some interesting stuff. It's over on rust.nult.io if you want to take a gander, and I'll stick the link down below. Oh, and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on so you never miss an upload. Probably. Unlike previous roadmaps, this one is actually interactive and lets members of the peasantry suggest and vote on which features they'd like to see next. But first, you should be happy for me because this video has a sponsor, which means my family and I can continue to eat pies and not die, so bear with me. This is you. You like the internet. I mean, you're only human. But you also know that online privacy is massively important, and this is where you need a VPN, and more specifically today's sponsor. NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, which is like a special tunnel that all your totally legal and above board data travels down, hiding your IP address and encrypting everything, thus keeping you safe. NordVPN double encrypts your data and lets you connect to over 5,500 super fast servers in 60 countries on planet Earth. You want to binge that new show on Rust Flicks that the survivors on the next island can watch because of their location? No problem. Fancy being French for the day? Sure, I won't tell anyone. It even works in a certain large Asian country with a population of more than 1 billion. You can use it on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Chrome, and probably even your toaster. It works while you're on the go, comes with a cyber security suite and ad blocker, and you can have up to six devices connected simultaneously with unlimited bandwidth. I could go on about its features, but the most important thing you need to know is that right now you can get 70% off NordVPN and an extra month free by using my link down below or with code SHADOWFRAX. Back to the video. So, the current Rust roadmap is divided into five sections. In progress, planned, researching, or thinking about without committing to anything, rejected, grr, we'll get to this later, and completed. There is, of course, a lot more being worked on. For instance, you will have heard me lately speaking about the animal art update, and the new mixing table has just landed on staging that I'll be making a video on tomorrow and that will enable us to make tea. Still no mention of biscuits, but hey-ho. What I'm trying to say is that this shouldn't be taken as a full roadmap. That probably exists on the back of a toilet roll tube somewhere, but rather, which community suggestions made here are currently on it? Also, some of these are still kicking around from the last time we looked at it, but no pressure. <laughs> at the top of the in-progress list is HDRP, and okay, this is where I immediately contradict myself because this suggestion was made by Gary. But nonetheless, Unity's high-definition render pipeline will hopefully solve a number of render issues and may, in big letters, lead to better performance. A number of tantalizing shots of the results have leaked out of Face Punch over the last year, and the commits log shows that it's still being ground away at heavily, so hopefully this means the team still view it as a good use of time. No dates for completion, though. Next in the list is better terrain. Sorting problems such as stretched textures on slopes and hills, a lack of flat building spots on mountains, flying rocks, which we've all marveled at, haven't we, and general rock formation boringness. This is kind of tied to the first suggestion, as HDRP will change a lot of things when it comes to textures. Interestingly, the third item is gestures, which we do kind of have if you're willing to play with keybinds, but I guess it's still here because we'll ultimately have them on a wheel, as this early example shows. The planned section is a lot more populated, though, and first up is fixing Bradley, stopping him from shooting you through walls at the launch site, which is not only annoying, but also gives away your position. Adding birds is next, and I'd love to see this. Birds in the forest or sky, even if just for decoration, would add a certain lived-in feel. They work great for adding scale to distant things, of course, and as discussed many times on this channel, vultures circling over something would be an excellent way to show where nearby loot slash danger may be found. New weather types are still planned. Again, I would say this will probably come post-HDRP, but eventually we may see the return of rain, snowstorms, or perhaps the odd radiation event. Who knows? Tier 2 cooking isn't a new idea, of course. 
Exactly five years ago, these concepts were floating around, and I think you probably know how I feel about pies, although we'll get to that soon. A recurring theme with this is that recipes could grant different buffs to players to actually give them a purpose, although that's exactly what the new mixing table does with teas, so that theory may be tested. If you're in the custom map making scene, you'll appreciate this one. A custom monument naming prefab. Basically, a way to actually give custom monuments a name that'll show up on the in-game map. I am, so hopefully this does get added soon. Bring back head turning when alt looking. Yes, please. Not only would this make cinematics more realistic, but it also looks funny as hell. When console? The ultimate question. The answer is, I don't know. Probably the less said about this, the better at the moment. Apart from that every time someone asks, Hulk gets diarrhea. No, honestly, I don't know. Make searchlights electric. This would make sense, bring them in line with other devices, but perhaps also add the ability to turn them on and off remotely, rotate them, or even allow them to track players which is probably why it hasn't been done yet. Now this is interesting. Scientist patrol boats, because the water is just too safe, and really, you're not supposed to be leaving the island or trying to do your bit for the environment by recycling junk piles, are you? Another one for custom map making. Radiation spheres of various intensities for custom maps. Yes, please. The Rust Plus app has been very well received, however, one feature that was requested and is now planned is to be able to log into your Steam account on any phone and see your linked devices rather than them being tied to a particular install of the app. Also, being able to see the upkeep status of your tool cupboards would be a big plus, and this is also planned. Of course, just like the real thing, Rust never sleeps and it has changed dramatically in the last couple of years, which means that the trailer on Steam, although good, is now more of a time capsule. Again, this may be something that's waiting for HDRP to be merged before making. Let's hope they just don't take too long about it. And lastly in planned, making bushes harvestable for berries, which I'd imagine will disappear from this list soon if the housekeeping is on point, because in just the last couple of days these have found their way onto staging. And make sure you check out my update vid this week for a full rundown. On to researching now. That strange limbo land between planned and rejected and ocean wildlife is at the top. It does make you wonder why you never see fish, despite being able to catch them in traps, if you ask me, fishing is something that every survival game should have, regardless of how much of a sitting duck it makes you, and sharks would make the sea so much more exciting. Make some islands around the map. Well, okay, we kind of have this, and custom maps can do whatever they like, but more islands and further out would definitely suit the more antisocial players like me making fireplaces heat bases. This was the plan, as mentioned, when they were added about three years ago. I mean, we have electric heaters now for that purpose, but come on, lads. A working train that goes around the map with rad towns that are linked by a rail network connected to the tracks that are attached to them sounds great on paper and has been here for a while, but I'd imagine making that work on a procedural map and getting it to fit in with the road system and everything else would be enough to give even the bravest developer an aneurysm. Still, props to them for researching it. Lighthouses emitting light at night? Duh. Just make them nuclear. Problem solved. A rework to the stand-up system is next, and what this means is making your chance of getting back up after being downed higher if your water and food bars are fuller, for instance, instead of being random. Teammate indicators on the compass. Personally, I'm in favour of just relying on your senses to find your way around and only knowing what you can see or have seen. But I guess if we're going down the route of knowing so much extra positional info, then this makes sense. Torch will give you comfort, warm you, and give you comfort. I ran this one through Google Translate, and I think I agree. Not as much as a campfire, of course, but it should definitely make your cheeks toasty. Fishing. Yes, just give it to us. Let us have competitions, catch rare items, or just dangle our rods in the water. I mean... The model is spawnable, so... A smart counter is another Rust Plus app request that would let you check your energy production remotely. Google Stadia is still here in the researching pile. It hasn't gone anywhere, but nothing else has been said about it, so who knows? Turret cameras being used for CCTV. I mean, yeah, there's one on top right there. There it is. Let us link these up to our desks and control them remotely, maybe. And network scale to clients. Another one that's been here for a while, and what it means in layman's terms is allowing Oxide or UMOD plugins to spawn prefabs with different sizes. Lastly, the rejected section, the place where concepts come to die. And there's one on here that particularly saddens me, but I'm still grinning and bearing my way through it for you. No, you can't have lighter nights, but of course you have night vision goggles now. Projectile invalid issue, but worth reading the comments on this one. Rejected because the T are constantly changing 
and improving the underlying issue, so not quite what it appears, halving the cost of half walls. No, sorry. But while I can see the logic of this one, I can also see the implications for base building and raiding. And... Okay. I think just a moment's silence for this one's appropriate. Half floors were almost added with the latest round of building parts, but were then pulled at the last moment for reasons. Chromebook. <laughs> and remove macro, no recoil, although we did have certain mice banned, so there. Of course, underneath this you can see all the suggestions that have been added so far, and to think of everything that's new just this year, I think they've done alright, but what do you think of what's currently on the map? Is there anything you disagree with? What isn't here that you think should be? And of course, when Wenconfo! Leave me your thoughts down below. Join me on Twitch to see me stream stuff, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group to stay up to date with my adventures, and if you'd like to support the channel then Patreon is a good option. Plus, you could get your name in the credits like these smashing chaps here. I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, Keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. When console.